This conference will now be recorded. Hello, uh, welcome to class. So this has been a too much requested topic. So like I tried my best to cover uh, whatever necessary for part two and three, MRCOG and EPCOG for twins, including uh, click questions and also the stations. So in this class, like I'll be covering NICE guideline and also twin guideline appears to be a little difficult and tricky topic. I'll try to help you out. You guys can ask any question if I'm not clear. So monozygous twinning, it, the rates are, this is constant throughout the world, monozygous twinning, and it is three to five per thousand birth. Okay. If the rate, uh, like if uh, IVF is not taken into account, so the, it, it has monozygous twinning has been constant. Okay. And dijagous twinning has been affected by maternal age because as the increase age, you know, the uh, uh, like uh, twin, uh, twinning is more race, nutrition and geographical location. So this is the difference. There, uh, this is difference. Apart from this, there is a huge difference in the perinatal mortality rates. No need to remember any rate that is not required at all. Just overview is required that perinatal mortality rate seven to eight for single baby and now it increases to how many times and it, it becomes 37 for twins it becomes 52 for triplets and 231 for high order pregnancies so sometimes they ask you question how many times a perinatal mortality rate is for so that this will help in answering apart from this child with cerebral palsy are eight times more in twins and 47 times more in triplets and sometimes these knowledge from this will be required in answering SPS because some of the stem will be able to do answer by exclusion because of all this UK uh, HFEA they, they just want to they want to decrease the percentages of multiple pregnancy from ART so they want to decrease it to 10 percent this is also an important number for your questions okay now understanding is very important so jagosity like twinning can occur in two ways how uh, how it can be there uh, if the uh, if, uh, like if there had been single jagot and it then divides into two then th these kind of twins, their genetic makeup will be same. And they will be of same sex, they will be concordant, and they will be monojagotic twins, or identical, completely same. On other side, there could be another type of twinning, when two eggs, they unite with, fertilize with two sperms. So these type of pregnant babies will be dijagotic because two jagots are forming, and they will be completely like, other pregnancies so they will be non-identical no relation nothing their ge uh, genetic makeup no no uh, like uh, uh, completely different so this is jagosity now we come to chorionicity or aminocity so jagosity it refers to genetic makeup whether as chorionicity or aminocity it refers to the placenta and the membranes so we'll discuss more about it now so what we have to understand so this is dcda dcda is like dichorionic diaminotic so these kind of twins are formed uh, these uh, when there are two sperms and two eggs unite and these babies they have uh, their separate chorions separate placenta Chorions means placenta, separate placenta and separate amnions, okay? So this is DCDA. Now, if uh, if they have got single placenta, so now you can see here, they have got single placenta, this is placenta. And so they have single placenta, but the their sex are different. They are lying in the different compartment of the sex or sex, but placenta is same, okay? So this is MCDA. MC means mono, chorion means placenta. So single placenta and diaminotic. So the MCDA, the name 
and the picture they are correlating but what is mcma now you can see mc means monochorionic single placenta so single placenta monoamniotic single cavity is there there is no dividing membrane so this is mcma so this is a simple basic thing we know it from the you our undergraduate days but it is important now how it happens so when the pregnancy occurs so 75% it will be dizygotic only so dizygotic is more common but 25% will be monozygotic twins and now how out of monozygotic twins um, how they are divided according to the percentages monozygotic twins they like um, they will uh, 30 percent of them will be dcda that means they they will divide they will have a separate uh, pleasant and separate amnion as we discussed but this will only happen if the cleavage occurs less than three days if less than three days after fertilization the jagot is dividing then they will they, they will have dichorionic and diamniotic means separate placenta and separate amniotic cavity but if the cleavage get delays by it happens by four to eight days or at the blastocyst stage then we get mcda so they have got same placenta you can see same placenta but the sac is different apart from this if uh, like cleavage occurs after uh, like uh, implanted blastocyst stage or a after 8 to 13 days of fertilization then the pregnancy will become mcma that means they have got same sac and same placenta okay so under and uh, apart from this if the division occurs after 13 days of fertilization then we get conjoined twins so this understanding of this table is very important because so it will help you you know in answering your sbas usually now this flow chart again same the uh, explain the same thing so this is now you can see dizygotic twins where two egg and sperms are uh, two eggs either uh, come uh, separate eggs are fertilized and separately the babies are forming okay everything is separate now coming to monozygotic when there is a single zygot now if less than two days or less than three days what we what we just read then if they divide then they will become dcda that happens in 25 to 30 percent but if it occurs at blastocyst stage now we we just saw we will get mcda we will get mc common chorion or placenta we will get mcda this will occur in 75 percent but if the fertilization occurs after implanted blastocyst then we get uh, mc uh, ma okay so this is the fertilization this is the chart this is a sim same thing but explanation in this chart is a little better so this how the formation occurs it is very important because that helps you in understanding till now any one of you have got any query any query okay if no query i will continue again now the, uh, sometimes this also you, this table also helps in ad, answering your question so monozygotic see, they have got the uh, same uh, genetic make makeup see, so babies will be identical and they will always be of concordant or the same sex baby but the placenta it could be that i already discussed in if the division occurs less than three days it will be dichorionic rest it will be monochorionic dijagotic twins these are like uh, two pregnancies in on a woman same so non-identical they will have always two pre, uh, 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 two placenta because two eggs are uniting with the two sperms and different genetic makeup they will have and sex either same or different either same or different so this uh, understanding is important because sometimes they ask you confusing questions about it 
now this just a uh, one time i think i have seen one question so i put this picture so about the presentation so most common is vertex vertex 42 percent no need to remember this number not asked ever in the exam second is vertex breach that is 26 percent now this the, this was a general overview about uh, uh about the you know formation of the uh, placenta and the twin fertilization now i'll be moving to nice guidelines so i'll be giving you briefs of the nice guideline that helps you in answering your questions and uh, okay so what basically nice guidelines explains the management of the pre twin pregnancy okay so what they want so um, uh, and uh, like uh, in the diet lifestyle and nutrition supplement so they the, what they say whether the patient is having twin or triplet pregnancy advice about the diet lifestyle and routine supplements are, is same it is not that they have to eat twice or for two or three babies it is not like that so this is one important learning point so they have they have same advice about the diet second we already know the anemia if it would is high in twin pregnancy as compared to singleton so from our nice guideline we are we know that the hemoglobin test full blood count uh, is done in the uh, uk two times in the routine in antenatal care when they do at the booking visit second time they repeated 28 weeks but in that twin pregnancy or the multiple pregnancy they will do one more time full blood count at 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy and why they are doing it because in twin pregnancy chances of anemia is more so if they are able to detect anemia at 20 to 24 weeks of pregnancy the iron or folic acid supplementation is done you must already be knowing from your guidelines that in uk it is not routine uh, iron supplementation is done they would be testing and if the woman is anemic then only they will supplement iron otherwise it is not so it is important to understand so there is one in one more time i have been seen twin pregnancy this question comes in exam and you have to put in the part three stations also now uh, part two people sometimes get this question also and part three people also have to explain what is a core team species obstetrician midwife sonographer who have got experience with twin and triplet pregnancies apart from this they have got referral team the referral team would include perinatal mental health professional physiotherapist infant feeding specialist and dietitian okay sometime uh, it is important like uh, to understand otherwise uh, you know uh, they will give you five options and similar options is very difficult if you don't know it clearly the, the question from the multidisciplinary team comes now uh, as nice explains the like care so what, what about the antenatal care now we already know if the uh, there are separate placenta is there that means there are two placenta and two babies so we, uh, these type of babies like dcda will have le very less complications as compared to other multiple pregnancies so what nice wants eight appointments eight appointments usually with a, a healthcare professional and they want these appointments are usually started from 20 weeks of pregnancy and these are four weekly scans are done okay so this uh, and additional appointments without scan like they are doing scan for weekly but without scan also there are two appointments 16 at 34 weeks but the question comes from these two lines only so these two lines are important you have to learn this because the question comes you uh, and you have to use in the part three and part two also okay so for dcda eight appointments usually starts from 20 weeks four weekly with scan so the, these are the two lines from where question will come now antenatal care with mcda so mc 
monochorionic, we are always worried, more complications, so number of appointment will be more, that is 11. Now they will start, we already know from our uh, green top guideline that this in MCDA, the, uh, usually the appointments start from 16 weeks and there are two weekly scan. So you will get question from these two lines. So you have to learn this. There is no like no other way. Apart from this, if there are three babies and three placenta, so one increase appointment, that is nine appointments. And also they again start from 20 weeks. So when the separate, in a nutshell, what I can say, if the separate placenta is there, they their appointments are starting with the scan from 20 weeks. If the placenta is single or it is monochorionic, they will start their two weekly scan from 16 weeks. Okay. So this part, this, this is important to learn because usually the question come from these two, these lines only. Now, if a, a, a triplet pregnancy can be with three placenta or it could be with one monochorionic uh, placenta and or dichorionic placenta. In this, uh, again, if the single placenta like mono have, word has come, so they, there will be 11 appointments and they will be started from 16 weeks only. Okay. So this, uh, the, and this, these are again two weekly, um, like every two weeks they, they are having appointment. Okay, so in a uh, like as I already said, if there are separate presenter, the appointments will start from 20 weeks, usually four weekly. If the single presenter, the uh, their appointment will start from 16 weeks and two weekly. So th these from these lines the question comes. Now from the triplets, uh, like coming to the combined screen, in the triplets chances of syndromes are more chances of uh, false positive uh, screening uh, test results are more usually th uh, a triplet combined test is a quite complicated thing it is done in the tertiary uh, fetal medicine center very important part that you should remember and it comes in the exam also like second trimester screen or quadruple marker is not done in triplets so this therefore i put it red also so and this is the screenshot of the guideline so what they say don't use second trimester serum screening for down syndrome in triplet pregnancies so this part you should you should know okay so this is not done now again sometime the question from this line also comes so according to nice guideline when in the multiple pregnancies, anomaly scan is done. Time allotted should be 45 minutes. Okay. And when the growth scan is done, routine growth scan they are doing, then time allotted is 30 minutes. So you have to know this. Now, the question come from this line slide also, that usually what can be done to prevent preterm in twin or triplet nothing can be done so they don't want to use arabin pastry rest circlage or oral tocolytics just for prevention preterm cannot be prevented in twin pregnancy so no option is there this question also i saw in one book so i put it here and apart from this question comes from here what are the indication of referral to tertiary fetal medicine center? So if like, just remember this, if a pregnancy with shared amnion, like if single amnion is there, uh, like usually they, they will be uh, uh, referred to the tertiary level fetal medicine center. Apart from this, if some, any complication is there, like difference in the fetal weight, fetal discordance more than 25%, or any of the baby is SGA, weight is less than 10 centile. If any anomaly is there, if death is one baby died, if TTS or is there, if trap is there, conjoint trains are there, 
or taps is there these are the complications so these complications will be handled in the tertiary level fetal medicine center okay so uh, these are the indications for referral to tertiary level fetal medicine center now this is what about the mode of birth so the what the nice say if the, the twin pregnancy is uncomplicated then either both options are valid options planned vaginal birth as well as planned cesarean section anything can be offered so usually what they say if the pregnancy is uncomplicated and progressed more than 32 weeks so they can be allowed for vaginal birth if no contraindication first baby in cephalic presentation and there is no size difference or no discordance is there that means uncomplicated pregnancy so both options are the valid options now you will get a lot of question from this slide and this has to be like learned by heart and so i have put in a synchronized honors so that it becomes easy to remember so dcda they want patient to deliver by 37 weeks mcda 36 weeks tcta that means trichorionic triamniotic 35 weeks mcma that is monochorionic and monoamniotic they want patient to deliver by 32 to 30 in between 32 to 34 weeks of pregnancy so this part is very very important because you will find question from here apart from this these numbers are also important like if the patient has got a twin pregnancy uh 60 percent uh, women will deliver before 37 weeks and in triplets more 75 percent of the patient will deliver before 35 weeks of pregnancy so for part two people this is very important because usually you will find question any question from here and also these numbers are important now uh, like the, this this is the time uh, what i just discussed that has been recommended by nice so that the patient should deliver but many of the women they will decline the proposed timing so then what what the clinician has to do the, then weekly usg where they are measuring amniotic fluid and umbilical artery doppler for each baby and this uh like uh, this has to be uh, uh, done That's a weekly appointment and uh, a week uh, appointment will be weekly and usg like uh, ultrasound usg scan will be fortnightly okay so usg uh, it is fortnightly scans, not weekly. Weekly appointments and fortnightly scan. So it is very important because because the, the question from uh, I have seen question from this line. So just un, so just remember this: if the woman is not wanting a pregnancy at the proposed time, then there would be weekly appointment with obstetrician and usg scan where they will check amniotic fluid and doppler this will be done fortnightly usually question come from this word fortnightly growth scans okay so this part you have to remember now according to nice what are the indication of cesarean section R till now we just read when the both options are valid so cesarean section indication first baby is non cephalic then they they uh, they want women to offer cesarean section okay non cephalic first baby second if the it is pre term like less than 32 uh, uh, like in between 26 to uh, uh, 32 weeks of pregnancy so these are the two things where nice recommends the patient should get delivery by cesarean section so you should remember the, for, for your exam this part now i just discussed this before also mcma they want they recommend cesarean section to be done in between 32 to 34 weeks of pregnancy and why they are doing early cesarean section 
because they have got no membrane in between you already know so there is a very high chances of cord entanglement and stillbirth we have to avoid this complication they offer cesarean section so early now apart from this triplets we just read they want them to deliver by 35 weeks and also they want a, 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 a nice guideline recommends cesarean section uh, like, uh, for triplet pregnancy so this is important about the mode of birth what they say about the antenatal care so if the patient is getting admitted after 28 weeks uh, monitoring by antenatal uh, if the patient is admitted for any antenatal checks or anything so ctg can be done by 28 weeks this is important number to remember can come in part two exam and it is all usually uh, like uh, there is uh, in the station of part three it helps but in the intrapartum what they say that ctg can be done after 26 weeks of pregnancy and uh, so antenatal it is 28 weeks intrapartum it is 26 weeks so i have put the screenshot so that that will give you the double visual impression apart from this if they are unable to locate fetal heart or anything or the patient is in the established labor the uh, uh, nice guide nice uh, recommends to form uh, to do a portable usg scan uh, now, when the monitoring occurs, there sometimes the like it can happen, and it is a very like, common complaint. Uh, like uh, uh, f uh, listening uh, uh, fetal heart of the same baby two times. So, what can be done for that? Like, if it is done uh, usually, uh, so it cannot be same number for the both babies. That means if the same number is coming for the fetal heart monitoring that means something is get going wrong so listing same baby for the two times so usually the, the fetal heart rate between the two babies will be differed by 20 beats per minute okay so like this this may be asked in the question so there are various ways they they do it like there there is ctg with dual channel so they usually try that and like on the ctg documentation with the maternal pulse also is are done but the basically you have to remember this number the two fetal heart should differ at least by 20 beats now this is very important this is asked in the labor ward of part 3 exam also this was the, there was a scenario when they say in the part 3 labor ward that the monitoring cannot be done so the answer was cesarean section in part three same explanation is given here so if the abdominal monitoring is not possible or unsuccessful so what they what could be the options number one for first baby like they can apply fetal scalp electrode and second baby they can do ctg this is one option second option arrangement for usg to lo locate the fetal heart of two babies and if no no way the possibility of monitoring heart is there then last option take out the baby and do cesarean section this is like this is intrapartum management and this is very important because uh, like it can come in spa or it can it is you uh, ask this usually knowledge from this part asked in the labor ward part three exam now, if the CTG of first baby is pathological, what they want? First baby, if like full dilatation and the criteria for the assisted birth is there, then assisted birth can be done. Otherwise, they want cesarean section in 20 minutes. Okay, so this, this number is also important, can be asked in the questions. Same for the second baby. If the CTG is suspicious or pathological, they want assist, if it is possible, assisted birth otherwise cesarean section in 20 minutes now third stage of labor usually we know that twin there is a over distension of the uterus so there is increased chances of tph 
what they want if there is one additional factor risk factor is there then uh, like uh, apart from the active management uh, usual management we do for third stage additional utrotonics can be used for example in uh, like i will discuss later also in third stage usually um, they also apart from the usual active management they add oxytocin infusion okay but this line is important because it can be asked in the sbas okay okay so till now so this is the like uh, uh, all update that would be necessary for part 2 and part 3 exam from the nice guideline so before moving ahead to this monochorionic twin guideline quite difficult guideline any one of you have got any question can ask me any questions any questions okay so I'll be moving ahead with, the, with this monochorionic twin guideline. Okay, so these are the important numbers from this guideline. So though I'll be discussing that in the guideline again. So just I have summed it up. So you like 30% twin pregnancy in UK are monochorionic. 1% monochorionic will be MCMA. TTS will affect 10 to 15% of MCDA. We know that. TAPS will affect 2% and post laser ablation 13%. SGR or SGA will affect 10 to 15% of the twins and TRAP will affect 1%. I'll be speaking them again when I'm discussing each of the complication. Now, monochorionic twin, mon uh, like usually rare, but it increases with the ART. ART increases both in uh, uh, monochorionic and dichorionic, but usually like uh, they are uh, doing single embryo transfer and they are delaying them by the, um, uh, they do it at the blastocyst these days. So, uh, and we just read in the initial, you know, part of the, uh, initially, we just read at the blastocyst stage, if division occurs, it will be monochorionic. So there is an increased use of D5 blastocyst because of that monochorionic twinning is increasing. So this is a valid example. Therefore, the understanding of the fertilization and the formation of placenta is very important. Now this is very uh, also important. This is from the strategy. So monochorionic twins have got two to three times more rate of malformation. Two to two to three times more rate of malformation. Apart from this, uh, like defects will be midline, hollow porcine cephaly, neural tube defects, and cloacal extrophy. CHD is also increased in monochorionic twin. And overall risk um, of cardiac conditions is 9.1%. No need to remember this number. Just remember in a sum up, monochorionic twin they have got two to three more times higher rates of uh, click um, malformation and th these are usually midline uh, apart from this congenital cardiac anomalies are increased now according to the uh, uh, um, like gtg uh, what they want so for the prenatal diagnosis Usually, we know it is done uh, like nuchal translucent. Uh, it is done at uh, uh, 11 weeks to uh, uh, 13 weeks plus 6 days when the crown drum length is 45 to 84 mm. So, this, th this is usually asked. This number is given. You already know this. So, what they want to ch what usually they do there in like uh, when they do nuchal translucency scan. They check for the fetal viability, age, chorionicity. That means placenta. Chorion is placenta. And they also want to include, uh, exclude congenital malformations. Okay. So these are things they do. And usually uh, they have uh, chorionicity. They have to, uh, they usually radiologist find out how many placental masses are there and what type of membrane attachment is there. 
and what is the membrane thickness i'll be just explaining that and this scan is best done before 2 14 weeks this is an also a question okay it is done before 14 weeks and usually they want the thermal copies to be checked like when we see usc reports always there is a thermal copy the thermal copy has to be kept because if it is uncertainty then if the thermal copy is there then second opinion can be taken and if any like uh, if any doubt is there then specialist referral can be done because chorionicity is best determined before uh, 14 weeks of pregnancy apart from this they have to label the placentas as upper and lower right and left okay um, so this part is like very important how they do prenatal diagnosis of monochorionic pregnancy same thing has been uh, explained by the nice so i put the same thing here they they write the same thing okay this is very this line is important like uh, it's like they are calculating the age and uh, some difference is there so uh, as they have to calculate the gestational age from the largest baby in a twin or in a triplet pregnancy so this line is it was not given in M's green top so i put the nice update here apart from this this part is important to understand you will get question also from this now this uh, this is the lambda sign lambda sign that means there are two pleasant now you can what is what is this lambda sign and usually in dichorionic uh, in usually in dichorionic pregnancy, uh, pregnancies that means this is now you can see this is one placenta and this is second placenta okay but at when these placenta are uniting some part of you know placenta it enters here in between the amnion these are separating two babies okay so this you can see so small part of placenta it comes here so because of this like it gives uh if the membrane separating membrane would be thick because a part of placenta is coming or this sign is called as a lambda sign so lambda sign is diagnostic of dichorionic uh, presentation that means lambda sign means there are there are two placenta okay so very important to understand because if the basic understanding is there then you answer the questions right now in monochorionic pregnancy now you can see this is a single placenta okay and you can see the membrane and this is a very thin membrane because nothing is going inside so it appears now now you this is the placenta and this is the membrane this appears as t so this is called as a t sign if the t sign is there then it is single placenta or monochorionic presentation a lot of questions asked from here so understanding instead of mugging up the things understanding is very important so lambda it is for two twin pleasant uh, it is for dichorionic presentation t sign is for monochorionic presentation apart from this this i i found this number important so if this criteria is used then the sensitivity and specificity were greater than 95 percent maybe you guys can, would be asked this number so i put this here is it clear about the uh, the lambda sign and t sign anyone do have any question about it you can write on the chat box okay and same is the nice guideline now two things are different this i already explained they want like uh, in monochorionic pregnancy there will be concordant sex that means same sex in di uh, dichorionic preg di dcda pregnancy there could be discordant sex sex will be different because the different presentation or different origin is there so this part is important to know if it is monochorionic, it will be always concordant sex. 
apart from this this is also sometimes what happens they are unable to you know find out the curiosity so what they will do then they will manage the pregnancy as monochorionic so this uh, question also comes from this line apart from this if the t uh, patient is high bmi patient so for doing a uh, like uh, this uh, uh, like prenatal testing even they can do tvs also so you may find a question that the woman is obese and we are uh, unable to find curiosity because the uterus is retroverted or the patient has a high bmi so what could be the next choice answer will be tvs this has been updated in 2019 so it is important to under know this also now uh, according to the green top guideline what they say about the monochorionic pregnancy and the combined testing we already know that it is done in between 14 to 30 13 plus 6 week, uh, 6 days 13, 13 weeks 6 days when I mean, the crown rump length is 45 to 84 mm but what they say if the patient is miss combined testing then quadruple marker can be done like we just read that in triplet quadruple marker has got no role it is so it is not done but in the twin pregnancy quadruple marker or the second trimester uh, serum screen is done okay now what they say about the quadruple marker they have got detection rate of 80 percent and false positive rate of three percent so this part sometime question comes from here and this is from this guideline though one tog is also there so this number i find found important so click i put it here apart from this monochorionic uh, twin they are not in, in uh, like uh, increased risk of chromosomal abnormalities but aneuploidy is increased in all, overall all multiple pregnancies because usually multiple pregnancy occurs at higher age now this uh, part is important that uh, what the uh, like uh, the green top guideline says detection of anopolyd rate you can see it from here also so uh, first trimester screening test usually we already know this is a nuchal scan plus beta scg and pape so combined testing so anopolyd detection rate is 90 percent anopolyd detection this is done at this uh, crl anopolyd detection rate is 90 percent false positive rate is also there for monochorionic it is 10 percent for dichorionic like we, here is a dichorionic it is 5 percent and singleton pregnancy is it is 2.5 percent these rates are like these percentages are different in the talk they are different but i have put it here from the uh, in cases of twin and from the green top guideline only because i have seen the question coming from these numbers apart from this nipt singleton pregnancy nipt it is 99 percent detection rate of anaphylide and false positive rate is 0.8 percent but corresponding values what they said in twin is 94.4 percent and i won't be able to explain why they have put zero here they have said false positive rate is zero percent so this is unexplainable but yes what the guideline say is this only so just have a glimpse maybe if they can ask number so this is important to know about the nipt according to the guideline now anomaly scan we already know that it is done 18 weeks to 20 weeks plus six days and as i already discussed before also the congenital anomalies are common these are midline this will be holopors and kefeli and td and the cardiac are more common we just read so these these are the uh, uh, thing they are especially looking because the midline uh, um, anomalies these because the division occurs in monogigotic twins we already know there is a division so if the problem occurs at the level of division while having division so all these midline problems are more 
okay apart from this now uh, like what they want the uh, usg schedule uh, the monochorionic pregnancies associated with many complications so this is the routine antenatal care they are recommending this same we read in the nice guideline also they want usg to be done from 16 weeks every two weeks they will start doing usg from 16 weeks and it will be done every two weeks and uh, like uh, till 36 weeks of pregnancy why they are doing it because we know there is a vascular communication and there are certain complication because of that such as tts sgr tap strap so they want to diagnose that so that the like appropriate treatment can be taken so because of that this is the uh, like usg scan schedule and at each usg they want to see amniotic fluid usually it is done by the deepest vertical pocket of amniotic fluid apart from this umbilical artery doppler or they want to check pulsility index so uapi apart from this feet uh, they, they are checking fetal bladder so like uh, uh, and the fetal biometry also they are doing fetal biometry that means calculation of the effective fetal weight so they because the risk of uh, fetal um, re uh, growth reduction is also there and the growth disco discordance is there because of that they are checking it every two weeks now this is the in uncomplicated pregnancy that means there had been no problem then this is the schedule so what we read it is the same sum up at 11 to 14 weeks they are doing their nuchal translucency and determination of chorionicity and from 16 weeks they are checking fetal weight uh, amniotic fluid and also umbilical artery doppler 20 weeks as we already know there will be anomaly scan rest of the pregnancy every two weeks till 36 weeks of pregnancy they would be checking fetal effective fetal weight to uh, find out any issues with the fetal growth dvp and you uh, umbilical artery pulsility index so this is this is when the pregnancy is uncomplicated so this is the schedule of usg scan now what they want this we same we read in the a nice guideline also that if the pregnancy is uncomplicated so monochorionic they want elective birth by 36 weeks of pregnancy and usually if there is no contraindication aim for vaginal birth now what could be the outcome of monochorionic pregnancy so in monochorionic pregnancy we already know the complications are high so fetal loss is higher than dichorionic pregnancy and usually it is second trimester loss okay and also there is increased neurodevelopmental morbidity question come from this line because of that i, I have put it here so fetal loss is 14 percent as compared to dichorionic pregnancy where it is 2.6 percent uh, less than 24 weeks of pregnancy so question comes from this line that fetal loss is higher and that to second trimester loss so this part you have if you don't remember the number that would be fine because the number the question from the number is not coming but you have to know about the fetal loss and it occur it more in due, due to second trimester loss apart from this neurological uh, problems are seven fold high so this part is also important because this may be asked in the question now uh, monochorionic these are the common complications that occur both in monochorionic and dichorionic twin pregnancy so one is preterm we already know we have read the number also another is fgr another is preeclampsia other anemia we already know and PPH and also the postnatal complications such as feeding difficulties and adverse uh, puperal mood changes. So these are the common complications 
of multiple pregnancy. Now there are certain complications. These are specific to the monochorionic pregnancy. This is TTS, SGR, twin anemia polycythemia sequence or TAPS, twin reverse arterial perfusion or TRAP, single uterine, intrauterine death. So whatever, so I'll be just explaining all complications because people find it very dif uh, difficult to understand. So understanding is important, then you can answer the question. Now, we know that in monochorionic pregnancy, there are vascular communications. So vascular communications are there in 95% of the placentas, but adverse complication because of the because of the like uh, vascular communications it occurs in 10 to 15 percent we already know that so now you can see this is dichorionic everything is separate okay two babies there is no vascular communications here but this is monochorionic single placenta so what kind of communications can be there there could be atrial atrial there could be venous venous or there could be atriovenous communication so these are the vascular communication that could be there this is so a twin twin transfusion syndrome so here there are certain both kind of communication uh, anastomosis or communications are there superficial also and devascular also so twin twin transfusion syndrome is the most important part of this guideline lot of questions come in part two and the special uh, and the station comes just come in this exam also about it part three so the tds is highly important and the quintro staging has to be learnt by heart because they will give you a scenario and you have to stage the condition so quintro staging is very important so usually TDS occurs in 15% of the monochorionic pregnancies, okay? So what is the control staging one? Then the oligohydromnios, that is DVP is less than two in donor egg, and polyhydromnios, that means DVP is more than eight before 20 weeks of pregnancy and more than 10 after 20 weeks of pregnancy. So this, this is oligopoly poly and oligo type of picture so this is this concordance in the amniotic fluid volumes so this is going to staging type one but no other problem is there second when the bladder of donor twin is not seen because of the severe oligohydromnios due to a anuria so in second if the bladder of donor is not there like we can't see on the scan so it is control staging two third uh, third is when the doppler becomes critically abnormal either for the recipient or for the donor so such as like abnormal venous doppler is there like reversed flow is there or pulsatile umbilical vein velocity so these are control staging three usually the question comes in your exams belongs to quintro staging three use what till now whatever i have seen so the question will come from staging three most commonly and type three when like ascites pericardial pleural effusion scalp edema or overt hydrops changes are there in the recipient so it is hydrops and five one baby is dead one or two babies, both had uh, like either of them are dead. So that is type five. So this you have to remember only because the question comes. Now I have put these uh, like uh, uh, some pictures. So this is reversed. Now you can see this is end diastolic flow and it is reversed in umbilical artery of donor twin. So you already know critical Doppler belongs to stage three. And now you can see this is umbilical vein Doppler and there is a reversed, okay, this is ductus venosus. 
it is like recipient twin so where pulsatile umbilical vein this is pulsatile umbilical vein though i have got less knowledge about the dopplers but apart from this there is a reverse now you can see reverse flow in ductus venosus so these are quintero staging three changes so just for the visual memory i have put it here now this part we have already learned so to detect tts they usually do scan from 16 weeks to weekly this i have shown you the chart also now tts has been diagnosed so what to be done so tts has to be managed in conjunction with regional fetal medicine center same thing we read when nice guideline nice i was explaining indication of referral to the regional fetal medicine center so what could be the treatment options so depending upon the gestation these are the treatment options that can be offered if the tts is there uh, so uh, tts is very important as i already know uh, to, uh, uh, told you and recently in the part 3 exam the same station about quintero stage 3 and tts has already come so it is important so what could be the options if the tts has been diagnosed first laser ablation second amino reduction third selective et side and last is the termination of pregnancy so these are the four options can be offered to the patient if the tds is diagnosed now what is laser ablation now you we already know that in twin twin transfusion syndrome their vascular communications are there so what they will be doing in that so usually like uh, they will it is done fetoscopically and the communication they will like uh, they will ablate uh, they will do ablation by the laser this is just though this is a very complicated topic but you will be able to just understand so these are the like uh, you can see that there is a difference in the growth so there are two twins and these are the vascular communication and by the phytoscopic route they are ablating these communications okay so survival rate after this is 70 percent and uh, approaching 70 percent but now expected to be at least one fetus will be surviving 81 percent no need to remember this number what could be the complication we already know there could be rupture of membrane there could be infection miscarriage and preterm delivery so too much details are not required just for the visual impression i have kept this so that will help in better understanding second option what we were discussing was the amino reduction amino reductions so like survival rate is 60 to 65 percent it is easy and uh, usually they just uh, like uh, it doesn't cause uh, when the patient has too much of symptoms or late gestation is there or ablation is not possibility then a minor reduction is done like they will take out the fluid they will take out the fluid okay so like uh, the, usually when the maternal discomfort there so it also it normalizes the fluid level so reduces maternal discomfort and also improves the utero placental perfusion too much details are not required just you have to know slightly now what your guideline says that we already know the treatment will be done in the supra regional center or the tertiary care centers if tts is diagnosed before 26 weeks of gestation the treatment option it will be photoscopic laser ablation uh, treat, uh, rather than a minor reduction or septotomy usually it is so before 26 weeks laser ablation done by the solomon technique so once the ablation is done they do for first two weeks they do weekly scan every week the scan is done for two weeks they will check uh, uterine 
अम्बलाइकल आर्टरी डॉपलर एम सी एम सी ए पी एस पी एस वी एंड डॉक्टर स्वेनोसस डॉपलर लाइक दे विल चेक फॉर ऑल डॉपलर एंड आफ्टर दैट द यू एस जी दे विल इंक्रीज यू एस जी स्क्रीनिंग फॉर टू वीक्स ओनली सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ फीटल हार्ट विल बी डन बाय द फीटल मेडिसिन स्पेशलिस्ट आफ्टर दैट बिकॉज देर खुड बी सम फंक्शनल कार्डिक एंड प्रॉब्लम्स दैट कैन अकर आफ्टर वेन द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर टी टी एस इज डन आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन दैट एंड वॉट अदर ऑप्शन गाइडलाइन इज इफ इट इज आफ्टर ट्वेंटी सिक्स वीक्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी देन कंसिडरेशन अमेनो रिडक्शन कैन बी डन बट इफ द अमेनो रिडक्शन कैन बी डन सो कॉम्प्लीकेशन इट दिस मे कॉम्प्लीकेट द ट्रीटमेंट बिकॉज देर कुड बी पॉसिबिलिटी दैट इन इन एडवर्टेड septostomy can be done like the the membrane that is there in between that there could be a hole like leg damage to that because they are just puncturing the membrane and doing amino reduction now this is the very important the why they want to do the cardiac scan it is important when the tts treatment is done for by the laser ablation then after that 11% will have right side heart problem pulmonary stenosis therefore they want to check fetal heart by the uh, specialist after tts treatment apart from this what can happen there could be they are they have done the treatment even after a uh, treatment like uh, some uh, uh, some of the anastomosis either can be missed so there could be recurrent tts after even after treatment it can happen in 14% of the patients numbers are not important but you have to know this now if the treatment is done when the patient has to be delivered according to the green top guideline the patient to be delivered anywhere in between 34 to 36 weeks plus 6 days after giving steroids usually the uh, clake mode of delivery will be by the cesarean section so this much knowledge about tts is important this is the same thing i just read about the from the contro uh, staging this is a nice guideline says the same thing now so th that's all about the tts this much you should know for the part 2 people also and part 3 people this also it is very important the most important part of the guideline i think is the tts now mo moving to the uh, like uh, fetal growth restriction so what they want like what the nice says uh, like this in, uh, uh, the complication part i have put both the guidelines together so that there would be comparison and also click better way of learn so if the fetal growth restriction has to be diagnosed like what the nice says in triplet pregnancy usually the monitoring to be done from 24 weeks this is for fgr and this is for triplet when they have got separate placenta and it is done from 24 weeks of pregnancy usually for to check for the a uh, like uh, uh, fetal growth uh, restriction they have to check two biometric parameters either dvp they are checking or like they will be checking other like fetal for the fetal weight usually uh, femur length abdominal circumference and head circumference these are the use with the headlocks formula and usually the calculation of fetal weight is done in the usg scan those who are doing usg scan they would be knowing that so they want like two parameters biometric two or more bi biometric parameters to be used for the like checking for the fetal weight apart from this amniotic fluid volume also so if like uh, mm, like a fetal weight discordance they have detected in 
ट्रिपलेट प्रेगनेंसी विथ क्लाइक लाइक ट्रिपलेट और ट्विन प्रेगनेंसी हैविंग सेपरेट प्लेजेंटा ओके सो दे आर लेस वरेड सो दे आर डूइंग इट फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर वीक्स एंड इफ इट इज डाइकोरिक प्रेगनेंसी वी एस जी इंटरवल इज ट्वेंटी एट डेज एंड इफ इट इज मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्राइकोरियोनिक इट इज फोर्टीन डेज ओके सो दिस पार्ट अ लिटिल डिफरेंट स्पेसिफिक फॉर एफ जी आर so you have to know separately also these are the formulas they are using for the discordant calculation but in my opinion i have never seen a question from here just reading once of this formula will be important then because you are never asked to calculate so for dichorionic fetal weight of big baby minus small baby divided by large baby this formula is for discordance this is from the nice guideline so i put it here because i wanted to do the complete topic apart from this discordance calculation in trichorionic pregnancy this is same here it is largest not larger largest fetus because there are three so largest minus smallest divided by 3 divided by largest and largest fetal weight of largest div, uh, uh, sub uh, like subtracted or minus middle fetus divided by largest fetus okay so just remember that they are uh, from largest fetus they are sub sub uh, subtracting or uh, the effect weight of smallest and middle and dividing them by the largest only so just have just read it once because it is not never asked in the exam now if they so this you can see from the picture there is a discordance now they are showing you the abdominal this is the abdominal circumference okay this is the abdominal circumference you can see there is a change the two uh, circumferences are different only so like uh, they if according to the guide uh, nice guideline like if the discordance that means difference in the weight calculation is more than 20% or if it is one baby's sga then they want them to check like every week they want uh, like uh, at least increase diagnostic monitoring in second and third trimester at least weekly so they are checking it weekly so this is a difference from the other guidelines so i put it here now the, this was the update from the nice guideline about the fgr moving toward to gtg again so what the uh, mcda okay this is gtg screenshot from the gtg only and again same mcda uh, what we were reading now screening for sgr so for sgr they want to screen from 20 weeks now this is a little difference if you want to click learn or understand you can just imagine if they are separate placenta nice is recommending scan from 24 weeks but if it is single placenta green type uh, green top guideline is saying the scan has to be done from 20 weeks okay because monocorionic pregnancy we already know the complications are high so they are starting doing scan for sgr like 4 weeks before from 20 weeks of pregnancy so this way it will be uh, easy to remember they want, they are doing two weekly scan we already know and if it is more than 20 we 20% we just read it now in the nice also so they will refer them to fmu and fmu will then decide what like in, in what frequency the scan has to be done so if it is greater than 20% refer to the fetal medicine unit is done okay sometime you will get a question only that effective fetal discordance is more than 20% they will give you option and answer will be referred to the fetal medicine unit usually this kind of question comes now sga has got uh, sgr has got types so now this is from the green top you already know so sgr can uh, what is the definition of sgr we already know growth discordance is more than 20% usually it happens in 10 to 15% 
TTS is happening in 15%, but SGR, it is happening in 10 to 15% of the monochorionic twins. So, according to the green top guideline, there are th three types. So, this is type 1. When there is a growth discordance, but the diastolic flow is there. But the diastolic flow is there. There is no problem in the Doppler. In second type, growth discordant but there is a absent diastolic flow this is type 2 there is absent like in diastole there is no flow or or there could be reversed flow so this is type 2 in type 3 it is cyclical say umbilical artery diastolic flow like positive flow followed by absent then reversed flow so and these are this in cyclical pattern it occurs and like over several like uh, uh, several minute time so it, in the cycle it is happening that present flow followed by a, a reverse or absent flow so these are three types of sgr uh, that can happen in monochorionic uh, pregnancy as explained in the uh, like uh, green top guideline now another important question that comes and you have to uh, click uh, uh, cl that will be knowledge is important so sometimes they will give you a question if they give you the like, usg scan finding and they tell oligo in once of uh, one baby and poly in other baby then the answer will be tts but sometimes they will give you a question then one baby will have oligohydromnios Another baby will have normal AFI or both baby will have oligohydromnios. That means amniotic fluid is either less uh, in both babies or it is less in one and normal in other. So if this kind of amniotic fluid picture is there, then surely we are dealing with SGR babies. We are not dealing with TTS here. In TTS, oligopoly sequence has to be there is this part clear anyone have got any question about that anyone have got any question about that because this understanding is very important any question no question okay now if the sgr for the sgr they are doing two weekly monitoring that we already know now, if it is type 1, that means diastolic flow is there. So, their aim will be to deliver by 34 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. 34 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. That is normal because in monochorionic, our aim to deliver is by 36 weeks. So, we can consider this as like the usual. 34 to 36 weeks of pregnancy. Now, if it is type 2 and 3, in type 2, we already knew that there had been reverse and absent Doppler. And in, in type 3, there were there is cyclical Doppler changes. So, they want them to deliver early. That is, okay. That is by 32 weeks of pregnancy. Because we already know from the SGA guideline, if the Doppler's like absent or reverse flow is there, we have to deliver them and uh, like we want to deliver them by 37, by 32 weeks of pregnancy. If you see the, the SGA guideline flow chart, last part, they want baby to deliver by 32 weeks. This way, you'll be able to click, keep in your memories better okay apart from this again same from the sga guideline if any abnormal ductus venosus doppler is there because we know in preterm baby we usually check the ductus venosus so if it is abnormal or if they have done computerized ctg and short term variation is there so these are the will be the triggers for the 
delivery so this will be the triggers for the delivery so this much knowledge is enough apart from this like latency period that is a period in between diagnosis and delivery uh, it is longer in monochorionic complicated by sgi as a uh, clay growth uh, um, restriction as compared to dichorionic or singleton pregnancy so they have got longer latency period so this line is also you have to understand so this is all about sgr the same i am not speaking anything extra here everything from the green top guideline now this is all about the survival they have written so just overview is important numbers they are not asked in the exam so like type 1 90 percent survival everything fine only type 2 90 29 percent demise and type 3 10 to 20 percent demise just remember it once see it once no need to remember the number they are not asked in the exam so that's about the sgr i have to say and even any question about sgr or i should i move towards steps okay i can't see any questions so what is the taps so what happens at taps uh, complicates two percent of the pregnancies only two percent and if the laser ablation has been done then taps post laser ablation it occurs in 13 percent in taps again there, ha there is a vascular communication but the vascular communication is very it is minuscule artery vein anastomosis is less than 1 mm so now if the communication is there in between two babies and it is very small minuscule artery vein less than 1 mm then very slow transfusion of blood occurs so because of that they develop anemia in a donor and polycythemia in recipient but the amniotic fluid changes are not there okay so this is the difference in in the tts and taps okay this understanding is important apart from this like donor will have anemia so mca psv will be high because we already know we use middle cerebellar artery doppler for the calculation of anemia so donor will have high mca uh, PSV and the recipient will have low because the recipient will have polycythemia okay so this is the difference in between TTS and TAPS okay apart from this now if the TAPS has been diagnosed so what will be the treatment too much details are not required either monitoring only expectant if it is near to deliver delivery can be done Apart from this, intrauterine transfusion for don uh, anemic baby and partial exchange transfusion for polycythemic baby. This can be done. And if it is early pregnancy, selective reduction or laser ablation. So this is the sum up that it, they have written it here. So I put it here. So it helps in, you know, understanding more details about more than that details about taps is not required now this is the again uh, like nice update about the taps so once that uh, for, uh, like uh, once the complication of uh, taps has been diagnosed they want weekly scan so they want weekly scan and referral to the tertiary fetal medicine center so this is after the diagnosis they are doing weekly scan now another complication that can occur that will be trap what is this trap so trap it is sequence is usually affects one percent of the monochorionic pregnancies so that is twin reverse arterial perfusion sequence what happens here that there is large artery to artery communication is there so it is till now what we were reading 
there were communications that were artery in between artery and vein but here we are in trap there occurs artery artery communication anastomosis is artery artery and it is large so because of that what happens one of the baby uh, like uh, it develops and like uh, up, uh, another baby upper part of the body doesn't develop so they have got no heart is not there so these are called as a a cardiac twins a cardiac twin usually it get perfused and receives its blood supply parasitically from don uh, from pumping co twin so this is normal twin so this twin is pumping blood to this baby a uh, second baby and only lower part of the body get develops and upper doesn't so it the, it doesn't have any heart so this is trap sequence it occurs in 1% and it occurs because of the large artery to artery anastomosis okay so this much knowledge is enough okay now you can see the picture also picture is from the strategy now what to be done if the trap is there so it will click what can be so whether the treatment is required or not that will be depend upon the size of a cardiac twin and the pump twin and how much cardiovascular impairment or the problem is the pump twin or the normal twin is facing so what could be done either uh, if it is early pregnancy it will be selective ft side or otherwise they have to ablate the communication in uh, that is artery artery communication how to do the ablation ablation is done by cord coagulation by uh, like uh, radio frequency ablation so uh, this is uh, only this much knowledge about trap it is enough now this 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 is very important and this is a, a clicked uh, here from the question in part 2 and part 3 both comes so one baby is fine another baby is died so what like how to manage the condition what what is a problem that happens these two numbers are highly important because they are asked in the exam so what are the like if one twin has died what is the chances for surviving twin death it is 15% and surviving twin neurological abnormality is 26% please remember these two numbers very frequently these are asked in the exam okay so second question what is asked when baby is died what to be done refer to fetal medicine center okay same we read in the nice guideline also now fetal mri is done after 4 weeks now why it is done that uh, they want to check how much damage to the brain of the uh, live baby had happened okay and so i'll just tell you the this thing why it happens usually when the one baby die dies survivor baby loses its circulating volume to the dying one so survivor baby or the live baby is losing its volume because of that there would be hypotension in the live baby low perfusion and ischemia occurs that causes organ damage and usually it causes damage to the watershed area of the brain because of that because of all these changes that happens there would be neurological abnormality in surviving to in 26% okay so this is the basic mechanism now there is happening anemia ischemia is happening so we have what can be done so monitoring is anemia monitored by uh, mid cystic like mid uh, middle cerebral artery doppler psv we already know that the mon anyway monitoring done by mca psv so this monitoring is done 
to check for the anemia and usually if any <clears throat> ischemic changes occur to in the brain of the surviving baby it takes four week time okay because of that mri is done after four weeks now you will and you guys will understand that what happens after the death of one baby and what is the management understanding is very important you will get question from here so uh, so this uh, that's uh, this all i have to say about it apart from this uh, now what will be done what will be the treatment if the one baby has died so usually the patient will be kept on monitoring there would be anemia monitoring by mca pcv doppler after that four weeks after that there would be mri then depending upon the mri they will then decide whether they can continue with the pregnancy or they will terminate the pregnancy uh, according to the changes that mri shows so this uh, a sequence of events happen if one baby dies okay any question any question no question okay so i'm doing my job correct the least common complication that also you guys should know conjoined twins we already know i have just told in the beginning if the like uh, uh, splitting occurs after 13 days then there will be conjoined twins usually incidence is 1 in 90000 to 1 lakh there should be multidisciplinary approach for the treatment delivery usually by cesarean section because if the vaginal birth happens you know what will happen there would be dystocia and rupture this much knowledge for conjoined twin is required if any question comes now there are certain absolute indication for cesarean section absolute indications this is mcma this we are reading for from i have told at least third fourth time and conjoined twins okay these are absolute indication for cesarean section in twins mcma this i have again previously also told delivery by cs 32 to uh, 34 weeks of pregnancy why because we are worried about umbilical cord entanglement now triplets if it is early they have been detected there should be discussion to be done about selective reduction and otherwise if it is they will be like seen in the fetal medicine center to manage this kind of case patients because all the complication of twin pregnancy occurs here okay so that till and now here finishes finishes the uh, like a green top guideline any one of you have got any question because now i'll be moving to the intrapartum management of the twin any question anyone okay either you guys are not listening well understanding well or i'm doing my job fine okay so now i'll be moving now the guidelines are done now this is a very very important part that i have put it here this is important intrapartum management of twins this is important for the part three viva station comes from here already had come many times and for the ebcog complex skill station comes from here so like this is important for both people very important topic no intrapartum management for twin okay so usually there is there is a multidisciplinary approach so midwifery staff obstetrician having the skills in delivering twins neonatologist and a is to be there so multidisciplinary approach second there should be immediate access to the ultrasound machine and operating theater are mandatory the reason we already know because i'll be telling it later and the like when the patient comes early in labor there should be a wide bore cannula iv access is there so these are certain prerequisite for the twin delivery 
now how the monitoring is done so usually either for both twins uh, like uh, ctg having two channels it could be used and if it is advanced labor then one the baby that is coming or about to deliver first baby fetal scalp electrode can be used for the first baby and second baby like uh, ctg will continue if any ctg abnormality uh, a first twin first twin ctg abnormality is there then we already know that we can take fetal blood sampling but if any concern with the second twin second twin is still inside high up so we have to deliver by cesarean section now you uh, like uh, whenever the twin is admitted in the labor usually as they already wrote in the prerequisite there is ex uh, there they should be an access to the usc why because uh, at the time of labor when the patient is getting admitted fetal lie and presentation has to be checked and so apart from this once the first baby is delivered there would be a period of inertia and big you know room is there so second baby changes its presentation so if uh, it is not always like you have what you have checked previously it would be the same so it changes its position and how do you know that by doing scan so it is important the scan to be there and this number is important so a presentation of second baby after the delivery of first may change into 20 percent of the cases this number is important and this is from the strategy now where place of birth immediate access to theater that i already told all options of anesthesia uh, can be explained to the woman in labor and including epidural because if the epidural is there we already know the operative deliveries and cesarean section become easy now management so if any delay is there in the labor uh, according to the nice guideline either amniotomy or oxytocin infusion can be as as per local protocol apart from this interval in between two uh, like birth of the two babies should be up to 30 minutes only and why they are recommending that uh, on a basis of a study that showed umbilical cord and venous ph a base axis of second twin will deteriorate why if the increase twin twin birth interval is there so increased risk of fetal distress acidosis if the delivery interval in between two twins is more than 30 minutes so this is sort of a maximum limit we already read in the nice guideline that second twin if not delivered by uh, assisted birth cesarean section to be done within 20 minutes so this is by the nice and this is by the strategy so like within 30 minutes second baby should deliver now usually what happens when the delivery of first baby is done is there so uterus becomes like there is a period of uterine inertia so that time the so obstetrician who is like delivering baby manually they should stabilize the lie of second baby by placing hand on either side abdominally after the delivery of first to in the first baby is delivered so the cord is clamped and labeled and so that it is identity separate we can identify it separately from the second twin uh, once the first baby is delivered then the scan is done as i already told to confirm the lie and presentation and if the lie is longitudinal then and the uh, oxytocin infusion can be started if the contractions are uterine contractions are not adequate now what now there could be two possibilities so birth of a cephalic second twin if it is in a cephalic presentation and so if it is cephalic so as i already told uh, there is a period of inertia is there so obstetrician should guide the he head so that uh, click uh, to the pelvis 
apart from this oxytocin infusion can be started so that it helps in promoting uterine contraction and facilitating engagement of fetal head and like when if the fetal head is fixed then only a uh, click uh, uh, rupture of uh, sac or amniotic sac should be done otherwise as the org whole cervix is fully dilated and and fetal head if it is not fixed and arn is done there would be cord prolapse closely monitoring is done any if any like uh, the non assuring fetal or maternal st uh, status is there then expedition of birth is done either it could be done by uh, assisted birth or by cesarean section so this is the these are the, po the protocol they are following if the second baby is cephalic now this is a suggested protocol for the vaginal birth of the twins very important a lot of questions come from here so a uh, like uh, the patient uh, iv access all epidural uh, like uh, um, all options of pain relief if patient is on the epidural there should be top up epidural oxytocin ready and if when the delivery is first baby is done time is noted labeling is done then usg is after that the usg scan is done to check the lie and the presentation and the fetal heart of the second baby second baby put on monitoring and time we have to note we already know now if it is like transverse lie then ecv can be performed without delay if the membranes are not ruptured so many sp the answer is, comes from this part and the people don't understand why the answer is ecv then if it is successful then arm followed by either one tubes or vaginal birth and if it is unsuccessful then internal podalic version or breech extraction is done so this is if it is transverse now this is a suggested protocol apart from this i will also explain the delivery if the non cephalic twin uh, if the uh, if the twin two is non cephalic so what are the options for the delivery number 1 external cephalic version number 2 primary breech extraction uh, extraction number 3 is primary cesarean section usually the question the, so whole 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 of this delivery of uh, intrapartum management of twin whether it is cephalic or non cephalic is very important so how the external cephalic version is done it is usually done if the second baby in, a, in the transverse lie to convert it to breech or cephalic and like because i already told that after delivery of first baby there will be a period of uterine acquiescence or inertia so this part this time will be taken used by the obstetrician and because of that the version is possible if the version is successful then oxytocin can be started so that the engagement is there and uh, like uh, in uh, when the external cephalic version is done then also it should be done under continuous monitoring because there is a risk of cord prolapse uh, is if the membrane get ruptured any time in the during process so this is all about the external cephalic version success of external cephalic version is 50% and it will be little less in the labor that we already know second option would be vaginal breech birth internal podalic version followed by breech extraction there is a ipv internal podalic version followed by breech extraction invasive process because it is a uh, like uh, uh, carried out to correct a transverse lie done by the obstetrician who have got skills so it is usually done so ipv followed by breech extraction it is usually done in the operating theater under analgesia when the consent is there so a uh, like uh, usually uh, like uh, uh, the, uh, it can be done in the regional anesthesia then it is ideal because a uh, like uh, a maternal mother can also do the valsalva maneuver but if it is general anesthesia then lack of valsalva maneuver will be there so a continuous fetal monitoring to be there 
Apart from this, new neurologist to be always present here in this condition. Contraindication for IPV uh, followed by breech extraction. Number one, mother is not giving consent. So lack of maternal consent. When the cervix is fully not dilated, not fully dilated. If the inadequate analgesia expertise is not there and the fetal weight is more than 4 kg. These are the condition where IPV followed by breech extraction will not be the option. So this is the second option for non-cephalic birth. If the second twin is non-cephalic. Now the last option the, uh, uh, for non-cephalic second twin will be the primary cesarean section. And it is required in 3 to 5 percent of twins. Why primary cesarean section is done when the first baby is delivered by vaginal birth? These are the indications. Now, cephalic birth changes to non cephalic, and the expertise to do ECV and IPV are not there. First, second, maternal distress, maternal consent is not there. Third, fetal distress is there, abruption is there, or cord prolapse is there, or non successful unsuccessful ecv or ipv like or if uh, or if they are failing so these are the few indications where cesarean section has to be done usually done for three to five percent of all twin birth so this is the intrapartum management very important for the vive of part three and also very important for epcoc complex skill technical skill station now this is the last part of it just the management of third stage so we already know that if the twin is there because of the over distension there is increased chances of pph so it third stage to be managed actively according to the hospital protocol as nanais also says if one more risk factor then additional oxytocics can be offered usually it is 40 units of oxytocin in 500 ml of normal saline and it is run over four hours as a preventive measures against pph labeling of placenta and cord to be done accurately there should be examination for completeness and any obvious abnormality of the placenta or membranes placenta and membranes to be sent for histopathology yeah, because uh, in, if it is a complicated monochorionic pregnancy, there could be this creepancy in between the placental size. And if the twin twin transfusion syndrome complicated pregnancy is there. So in these conditions, histopathology of placental membranes usually help. Sometimes there could be presence of vanished twin and fetus paparaceous. So all these three, uh, all these things can only be like uh, uh, confirmed when the histopathology is done. So these are the indications where the histopathology is done. So I think that completes the everything what is required for your exam for twin pregnancy. So any one of you have got any question can ask me. Otherwise, I'll, I have a few questions to ask you guys. So I'll, you can answer questions. So yes, any I questions? Have, yeah, I have a question. For Down syndrome, all Down syndrome for twin pregnancy should be in the fetal medicine center. And what is the best one, whether it is just ultrasound for nuclear transmissions? For twin pregnancy? Yeah. Yeah, for twin pregnancy, it is the nuclear translucency scan only. And the, like, they, they check many things, the number of fetus, placenta, chorionicity, membrane thickness, and CRL, and nuchal translucency. It is usually done before 14 weeks. And during pregnancy, it can, be, it can be done by the radiologist. But for the triplet pregnancy, it is done. It is the best, and it is done by the fetal medicine center people only. I mean, combined test is a high false rate, so we use only local translucency. They use only. Hmm, what are you saying? I mean, the the combined test there is increase uh, false. Uh, I mean, positive false. So in such condition, yes. usually they use only local translucency for screening. For yes, them. 
yeah 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 what what see if the number of preg- babies are more chances of false positive has to be more because you know in in combined test they do nuchal translucency so nuchal translucency calculation for all three babies will be correct but when they combine it with the serum serum so in serum they are uh, uh, measuring beta hcg and pap a but that result it cannot be blood result from mother it cannot be differentiated so false positive will come are you getting it is yeah, very yeah. difficult yeah. nuchal translucency radiologist will mark for twin by baby 1 baby 2 baby 3 but blood screen it will be same for all because maternal test cannot be differentiated because of this issue the like uh, um uh, this thing uh, chances of false positive becomes high in triplet okay yeah, so this is the only one test and now if you come to second trimester screen second trimester serum screen it is not recommended for twins yeah okay uh, so it is recommended for twins sorry it is not recommended for triplets yeah. because from three babies all blood parameters are coming so how the test will be done it they cannot detect it so a, a second a trimester screen for triplet is, is not recommended at all am i clear yeah then there what about uh, fetal dna is there is any difference between monochoronisty and dichoronisty result i mean if monochoronisty it could be the same result for two babies right Or, uh, yes. DNA. Yes. Uh, like uh, NIPT, uh, what they say, like generally they are uh, they are saying for NIPT for if if it is single baby, then there will be no dilution of fetal DNA. So they will uh, they are giving result of ninety nine percent. But for twin pregnancy, there would be like fetal dna for a single or both baby will be different for single baby it will like if it is a monochoronic so there would be problem they won't be able to detect that much well because the genetic makeup is same apart from this amount of fetal free fetal dna will be higher in twin pregnancy so that much clear result uh, nipt cannot give that much clear result they cannot give because of that they 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 quoted the percentage as 94% only so you mean i i mean yeah, it is preferable to send them for fetal medicine unit to check for uh, i mean screening for uh, for uh, down syndromes or only only triplet they will send to the fetal medicine unit for uh, screening for down syndrome see for twin pregnancy it can be done by the radiologist but for the triplets it is uh, they refer them to the fetal medicine center okay okay yeah, and okay. best for twins or for the triplets it will be combined test only oh. okay yeah okay yes. okay now you guys can answer So, 27 or uh, year old woman with monocor MCDA pregnancy, experiencing abdominal distension and thirst. She has scan as 18 weeks. Baby one has reduced abdominal circumference and oligohydramnios with visible bladder. Baby two has normal abdominal circumference with polyhydramnios. Doppler is fine. So, what is the like? Uh, what is the stage of uh, TTS? Two, doctor. Two? Yeah, because if there is, uh, there, I mean, different, and there is visible bladder. But Doppler was the normal. Doppler is usually three, right? Yeah, Doppler is fine, and uh, even the uh, bladder is also visible. So what will be the stage? Ah, uh, so you mean the bladder no change? Yeah. So one, yeah. stage 1 yes yeah, so it is stage 1 it is stage 1 okay
because we are seeing bladder if bladder is a we can't see bladder it will be two if doppler problem three high drops four death of the baby five so this is the sim sm simple way of understanding now 29 year old woman with dcda her pregnancy complicated by tds 22 weeks uh, like she has reduced abdominal circumference oligohydromnios and visible bladder twin 2 has normal circumference and polyhydromnios doppler is fine so what will be the next step referral to the fetal medicine unit doctor yes best best answer refer to the fetal medicine unit so 29 year old woman with 26 weeks with mcda report uh, scan report twin one have normal circumference normal doppler study twin two undergone fetal demise so iud is there so what to be done refer to fetal medicine unit refer to fetal medicine, medicine, yes. medicine unit that is the standard answer if it is there uh, so a 32 years old woman with 26 weeks monochorionic twins her scan shows twin one has reduced abdominal circumference reduced like her and dvp is three centimeter doppler's fine twin, twin two has got normal uh, ac normal liker dvp is six so what is this suggestive of elective fetal growth restriction yes very good so this is sgr now we can see that it is oligo in one baby uh, like uh, uh, it is oligo in one baby and also uh, oligo in second uh, like uh, it is normal in second baby so oligo or normal both baby oligo or one baby oligo one baby normal it will be growth restriction only sgr so 26 year old woman presented in admission care unit with sudden onset of breathlessness abdominal tightness she reveals 20 weeks 20 weeks of pregnancy observations are fine chest abdomen distended fundal height 40 weeks what is a primary investigation What she's having? Abdominal ultrasound, twin to twin transmission syndrome. Yes. So she is developing uh, polyhydromnios. Uh, because of that, she's having breathlessness. So do scan. Okay. So a healthy primary gravida presented with DCDA, normal growth, no antenatal complications, spontaneous labor, 36 weeks pregnancy. Scan one, baby one, cephalic, baby two transfers. She wanted to have vaginal birth. Twin one is delivered with no complication. After that, Sinto is started. Baby two in breach, reassuring CTG. But after 10 minutes, the baby not descending. What is recommended birth interval? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Fetal yes. There is no distress. Yes. So a uh, birth interval in the between twins should be less than 30. We already know this. The risk of fetal uh, uh, distress acidosis are higher if TTA twin twin trans, uh, birth interval is more than 30 minute time. So uh, 26 year old woman, 33 weeks of pregnancy, MCDA, first baby cephalic, second baby twin breach. Pregnancy is un uncomplicated. CTG is fine in the labor. First baby is delivered. Second baby is twin two. Breach. High up. Contractions are there. 30 minutes have been passed. CTG is suspicious. What will be the next management? Breach extraction, doctor. Like in the theater, should we? But CTG is suspicious. Cesarean section already 30 minutes crossed. 
yes and breach is high up okay breach is high up i am correct so high up breach 30 minute pass suspicious ctg okay so cs will be what could be the answer only cs here so premi gravida dcda spontaneous labor first baby delivered at 9:30 am second baby is cephalic presentation by usg scan membrane ruptured she is contracting 3 in 4 every 10 minutes she is fully dilated vertex 1 plus no caput molding ctg is fine reassuring trace so what will be the next uh, plan Can you please also cephalic presentation membranes ruptured 30 minutes already crossed, but reassuring CTG so transfer to theater for trial of instrumental delivery with or without category one cesarean section, ma'am. Ah, uh, what you said? Instrumental birth. See, ma'am. You said. Ah, uh, but you know reassuring trace. so cesarean section will not in my opinion cesarean section will not come in the picture because uh, ctg is fine only already 30 minutes have crossed no? yes but 30 minutes already crossed and it's first one watch for progress of labor in room and prepare for instrumental delivery if required yeah no, i put this on as the answer i put this already i'm yeah. conscious because like i know the 30 minute like uh, 30 minute passed so it patient should deliver but the finding what they are giving like fully dilated plus one station contraction are also very fine ctg is fine so like little more trial can be given so i okay. put the answer is, uh, 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 like the, you have like we need to see whole scenario before we put any answer so watchful uh, uh, watch for progress of labor and prepare for instrumental birth so you can fasten up the delivery if the ctg is fine a uh, cesarean section option will not come only because they they never do unnecessary cesarean section so uh, option 2 mm-hmm. and 3 are go- so either no, a no, no. or Okay. Is it not so safe in, to uh, prospect the instrumental delivery in theater, ma'am? Option C. Theater. Option C. But category they have given category one cesarean section. Why category one? If the CTG is fine. With or without? Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Good. Room, uh, like immediate assisted delivery also not required because CTG is fine. So I put answer four. Because she's primary gravida station at plus one, I thought it should be delivered in theater. No, like uh, if if but there is no problem with the CTG. Yes, ma'am. It is so, mid cavity delivery, no ma'am. Zero at plus one. Yes, so primary gravida mid cavity focus delivery. Instrumental delivery again. The option goes in favor of theater del instrumental delivery. So I was confused for C and D here. Hmm. So. transfer to theater for trial of instrumental in category but the category cesarean section minor uh, category 1 cesarean section is not matching yes ma'am but category you mentioned with or without hmm with or without considering the primary gravida at mid cavity for uh, instrumental delivery i thought mm-hmm. we have to deliver it in the theater you uh, yeah you if it is like if the mid cavity delivery has been already decided then yes it has to be done in the theater only but this woman because is because what is plus one only here yes so the if the, like if they here they say ctg is suspicious or pathological then answer will become a c because ctg okay. changes are there yes if, ma'am if they, 
if the if they say something about ctg then answer becomes c but okay. if as the ctg is fine so mm. like they wait for a while okay got it ma'am okay therefore therefore Thank you. because the ctg is fine and in uk if the patient is progressing and ctg is fine then usually they will allow to deliver them okay okay yeah okay so primary patient with dcda with both twin cephalic at 36 weeks spontaneous labor first stage first baby is cephalic second is transverse after delivery of first baby repeat scan was done now second baby is breech what what change, chances of change of presentation of second baby after delivery of first twin in labor you 20%. already know this yes 20% this i have already told this is the last question so primary gravida with a twin pregnancy has been booked for antenatal year 16 weeks of gestation despite refer they have referred to the higher center but the curiosity was not established by usg fetal growth is fine so what is the best option for antenatal management They manage as a monocorion twin D. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Answer is right. So if they are unable to comment on chorionicity, manage as monocorionic pregnancy. Okay, that's all about it. Thank you for joining. Any question is welcome. Thank you so much. Any okay. Okay, welcome and bye.